Hey, what's going on guys? It's David from Gen Zio. We are in Denver, Colorado for ETH Denver. I just wrapped up with Ty from Hedera, a fantastic interview yet again. Uh, we spoke about Hedera, his thoughts on AI, this inevitable wave we are seeing, and really what's to come for them as well. I hope you guys enjoy it and I look forward to your response. Hey, what's going on guys? It's David here from Gen Zio. We are in Denver, Colorado for ETH Denver. I am with Ty of Hedera. Ty, how are you doing? Doing great, doing great. How much yourself? Phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal day. It was second to last day of ETH Denver. Yeah. Um, it's crazy, you know, it, it's like you look forward to this all year and then it just, once you get here, just so like boom, 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 boom. Now here we are, it's man, fast. it's tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But nonetheless, fantastic time. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And you're from around here, correct? Yeah, yeah, uh, located in Denver. Um, mm -hmm. Easy to get to ETH Denver, but uh, I very much enjoy everyone coming in and being able to enjoy kind of the best parts of the town, um, uh, if you can get out of the convention center. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice, man. So tell us your role at, uh, ETH, at Hedera. Yeah, so I'm the senior product manager of the Hedera token service and Hedera consensus service. Mm -hmm. um, I work on uh, some AI strategy with the AI strategy team internally, and our goal is really just to create the best decentralized method of tokenization, at least my goal, mm -hmm. uh, and allow um, good user experience to be used with Web3 for enterprise scale and global adoption. Okay, nice, man, nice. Now, what has changed since the last time we interviewed you to now? Ooh, um, all of computing. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I think last time was uh, ETH CC, but uh, AI has just continually had an exponential change of how everyone interacts with digital content, creates digital content, and um, the the most exciting thing is that we see this two hundred billion dollar market of AI mm -hmm. uh, converging with the one point five trillion dollar market of crypto. And there's some misconceptions in like some commentary that this is like ICOs, this is like DeFi, this is like NFTs, we're in this new cycle of AI. And it's, uh, it's sort of like a, that, not a novelty, but it's a cycle internally to crypto. It's an external technology that on its own is changing computing and it's converging with Web3. So we're not seeing, uh, it's not internal, it's an external source and they are converging at a rate um, that's very, very high. Uh, like. The amount of code I wrote six months ago is 800% more than the amount of code I write now, and I get more projects done that are coded. And it's just because AI is supplemental in all, all aspects of development, mm -hmm. um, and it's just, uh, it's gonna continually, exponentially get better and better. So when we talk in three months in the future, I'll be like, I don't even have a computer, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it just, uh, I just uh, say what I want and it's created in front of me, so. It's a, it's a very exciting time in both industries. For sure, man, for sure. Now, you brought up AI, okay? Now, we, we, you know, we were speaking about this the other day internally. It's like this inevitable wave of AI in Web3. Um, you know, we're already seeing um, AI being used with projects in Web3, of course, utilizing the, the, the tools and everything. And I'm just kind of curious, what is your thoughts on this? AI is the accelerant of the global adoption we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, we, user experience is the hardest part of crypto. Um, you have you have data sovereignty. You have um, you know transactional unique. You have you can hold your funds, financial sovereignty. Uh, but there's problems with that. Like if you lose your key, there's no method of getting your key back. So yeah. that's a really bad user experience part. Um, there's something called direct that's working to fix that. But the other part is just like it, it, the general public. It just will never really fully understand liquidity pool tokens and like liquidity staking. There's just a small percentage of humans that are going to be that deep. And the ability to abstract the complexity of the protocols and the um, all of the inner workings of cross chain, bridging, you know, liquidity pools, market makers, all of that is removed when you introduce AI as the user experience layer of interacting with crypto. And we're seeing that, you know, Eliza, if you're familiar with that, it's one of the most popular frameworks for AI bots. Um, it's, it's stars on GitHub uh, exceeded Gemini in such a short amount of time because its ability to have a conversation with and uh, its plugin structure where you can bridge assets, you can now talk with your wallet and you can explain what you would like in a very conversational way. Mm -hmm. And all of those things are still happening, the protocols of security, that's fundamentally needed for the foundation. But AI is actually allowing us to have massive onboarding moment with the general public in the next five to six months because they won't have to have this deep dev understanding of the protocol. They need to know what they want to do with their money or their assets. 
And that, that's, that's the game changer. Okay, wow. No, no, for sure, for sure. Now, also, this, we're talking about inevitable waves, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I just love saying that. Uh, this whole thing of like, you know, Web 2 projects are now going to need to be start taking on characteristics of Web 3 projects. You know, and there's this bridge, right, between the both of them that are existing, right? And I'm curious to know, what's your thoughts on that as well? Like, do you see this? This is happening right before our eyes. They need to start... Um, taking on some of these characteristics now, maybe not all of them, but most of them, yes. The adoption of AI for Web2 companies will be first. So the okay. conversational interface for you to understand your Fidelity account or the understanding of your real estate um, that you want to sell or buy, um, customer support, like all of these things are already kind of happening, chatbots and stuff. But what's going to happen is when those, when those agents get more and more sophisticated, it's required that we start having authenticity inside of our agents, our bots, whatever you want to call it, the AI. And authenticity is the, the, like, the main point of Web3 of understanding that's the wine, like, mm -hmm. that's a signed wallet, this is a signed transaction, I can tell you that this is who this is. And so the problem of AI, which is like mass, uh, mass digital media creation that is un, you know, un it's just hard to comprehend. You can have like a video of a person that doesn't exist talking on a podcast within two seconds of getting a caption feed. And so all of this digital media is flooding all of our social media and the way that we digest information. And we must have authenticity to know where that media was created, if that media has been manipulated by AI since it's been created and got to me. And all of those touch points require Web3 data hashing and these underpinnings of Web3 to bring that authenticity to know that what you're seeing is real, mm -hmm. or at least it's coming from a source that you trust that source on the other end of it. Yeah. And so that's, um, I think, what, again, Web2 is gonna start with AI, and then they're going to need to understand uh, the Web3 component as authenticity becomes empirical for their value add to their customers. Okay, wow, no, that makes sense, totally does. Now, is there anything specific coming out from Hedera uh, in the near future? Anything you want to announce? Yeah, um, I didn't plan on only talking about AI, but here we are. So yeah. um, there's a HIP, uh, HIP 991, um, which is really interesting that uh, in the Hedera consens consensus service, mm -hmm. which allows you to borrow the consensus of the nodes from Hedera to document uh, one kilobyte of data. Mm -hmm. So it's like, hey, you voted red, uh, not blue. You can put that onto a topic ID and that'll be sequence number one. And I voted blue, not red, and that'll be sequence number two. And this has a hash, it's really easy readable, it's on the public ledger. Um, but HIP991 allows the, uh, the owner to collect a fee in order to post a message. And so when you inject AI into that, um, a communication mechanism where the AI bot can look at a topic and say, okay, well, I've been paid $10 if any uh, message is here, and I don't have to check the balance of a wallet, I don't have to look at a transaction ID, no. the fact that the message exists means I was already paid for my compute, compute. And so it, it streamlines decentralized monetization of AI compute and allows AI bots to be much more efficient and dynamic because you can change the custom fee key. And the other thing about HIP991 is that you can put a custom fungible token on. So I don't have to just get paid in HBAR, which is the native currency of Hedera. Yeah. I could have, oh, I need a thousand, you know, Thai tokens. And in order to be post the message, you must pay in my fungible currency. And AI bots, you know, virtuals and all of these other uh, systems have kind of created, oh, well, my fungible token is how you get compute for my AI bot. Uh, that will be implicitly built in the protocol of Hedera to facilitate that monetization and usage and utility yeah. of that token. And again, that bot doesn't have to think about anything. It, it makes all of the you know, the less gears and moving parts, the less places of failure. It's very, very streamlined. Message in, read message, compute. Um, so I'm very, very excited about HIP991. Cool, man. Now, where can we follow you guys? And yourself as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm on uh, Twitter at uh, SL underscore patches. And then uh, at Hedera mm -hmm. uh, is a good place. Uh, you can check out uh, portal.hedera to set up a testnet account, start playing around with it. Uh, and then, yeah, just check out our docs. Um, but it is a very exciting time. The way that our network has been created is for consistent fees, no fluctuation in gas, very fast consensus, 10,000 TPS, uh, and very, um, very, a lot of consistency and two to five second finality. So you get really like a user experience a mobile user would have. Like I click this button, three seconds, it's done. 
you get finality consensus on Hedera. So all of these components put together and this wave of AI adoption and usage coming, um, check out Hedera because I think we're going to be a very big part of how AI communicates and computes in the future. Cool, man. Well, Ty, thank you so much for coming again. Pleasure. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Yep. Brought to you by Hedera and Foresight Ventures. Hey, what's up? If you want to survive, you got to build a house. Let me tell you do not understand. Three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen. We're back at the Genzio Nuclear House. Oswald, thanks so much for joining us today.